Graveyard Shift, based on one of Stephen King's earliest short stories, reminds you that if you think you have it bad, particularly a cruddy job you loathe going to every day, be thankful you don't work at Bachman Textiles, a textile mill somewhere in the state of Maine. And be thankful you don't have a boss, like the foreman, Mr. Warwick, who may be one of the greatest characters of all time. Come on in. That's supposed to be a main accent, but it comes off as a cross between the Transylvanian Dracula and magician David Blaine. Sure beats nailing him with soda pop. I love this guy. He fits so many boss stereotypes. He's always sneaking up on people. There's no jump scares. It's always going to be him. And he's a complete womanizer. He's married, is having an affair, and attempts to have another affair on top of that. He's one of those guys that gets jealous when he sees a woman with a man. Oh my goodness. I mean, how could you not resist those muscles? Ugh, yes, so strong and skin so supple, pale as the moon's ass, drowning in sweat that gives off an alluring must. How could you not resist that? The actor Stephen mocked must have realized how ridiculous the script was and takes the smallest things to the extreme and overacts. Even when just eating an apple. <laughs> now we don't do better than minimum to start. Everything Warwick says, I just want to laugh. Like here. Take coffee. Just, uh... Hall. No thanks, I'll pass today. Yeah. Me too. It's horrible dialogue, but just him saying, me too. Makes no sense to me. <laughs> I love it. If it wasn't for him, there's no way I would have been able to trek through the first 70 minutes because nothing happens. It's just life in a small town and at a textile mill. I forget I'm watching a horror movie sometimes. It's so boring. But that all changes in the last 20 minutes. Mr. Warwick doesn't even transition into insanity. No, he just suddenly becomes a different character. He coats his face in dirt, falls down some kind of shaft, now has some deranged revenge mission to kill one of his employees, who didn't do anything. He also goes on a killing spree and gets in an over-the-top fight on a mountain of skeletons, which lasts for quite a while, and he gives what may be one of the greatest lines in film history. We're going to hell. Aside from Mr. Warwick, there's nothing appealing about this movie. It's so slow-paced, which you know I love. I guess they made it slow on purpose so we can hear more of this stupid crap like this. It's just a water hose. Why is he freaking out? Dougie, shut up! There's also Brad Dourif as the Rat Exterminator, who if you know Brad Dourif, best known as the voice of the evil doll Chucky, he takes even the lamest of roles and treats it like he's Hamlet. But it's a wasted role. He gets killed by a gravestone. Not a rat! A gravestone! There's no irony, no thought! It's so stupid! Not that the rats actually kill anyone, they're more or less there for atmosphere. They come off as adorable. <laughs> at them. Is this mega -y? I'm more entranced on the fact that a rat trainer was able to get all those rats to peer over the edge in a line. This is a rat marathon. I should have more to say about the rats, but that's all there is. It doesn't feel like a killer rat movie. Instead, the real menace is this giant mutated bat. You don't see it all that much, so if you're into death scenes and gore, it's kind of lacking. A lot of it just feels lazy or it's off screen. But what you do see of the creature itself, the effects look really good. And you don't see it too much, which makes it more scary. But not as scary as the music that plays during the credits. Damn! The graveyard shit. I'm gonna 
God, this is bad. What? It's horrifying! It completely goes against the film's serious tone. You got a problem? I ain't got a problem. You got a problem? I ain't got a problem. Man, this film's a golden turd. Watch it for Stephen Moffat as Mr. Warwick. Otherwise, it's not worth your time. Yeah. <laughs>